Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Decryption and I hope you are well. One of the common problems I see people having with narrative is trying to play animations on the characters. Because it's not as simple as just dragging the animation and playing it, there are a few little tweaks you need to make to your character for it to work forever on. After you make these tweaks, you can just drag and drop animations straight on, but these few little steps always catch people out. So in this tutorial, we're going to look at how narrative actually plays animations on characters, and we're going to look at all the different fixes you can take and all the steps you have to take to make the animation play. If you follow these steps, get them down, you do them once, you pretty much never have to do them again. So let's get started. So I've just got a simple scene set up here and I've got my character Gary here. Pretty much dead simple. And Gary has a bunch of problems that I pre-set out so we can run through it. So at the moment if I click play you can see my game started and Gary's facing me. He's in the T-pose. I haven't given it any animation even an idle one just yet. So let's walk up to him and it says hi there I'm Gary. This line should have moaned. Perfect. Okay. Nothing happened but that's the basic scene I've got up. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of his T-pose. I want him to have a proper idle animation. So I'm going to come into his blueprint. I'll select his mesh because that's where we apply the animation i'll select use animation asset and then i will come and i haven't got an animation yet let's go and convert one over so i've already got my retargeters set up here if you haven't got animation retargeters or ik rig set up i do have a tutorial on it it's super easy to do link in the description i've just gone and robbed another breathing idle one so we've got a variation but now we have breathing and punching so they're the two states of our animation so his idle pose i'm just going to set to his breathing idle like so and now you can see he'll breathe idle it'll look better so what i want is on his dialogue that it comes in and when he says this line should emote more he's gonna punch that'll be his animation i'm gonna come into body animation and you'll notice i'll be able to select all the als ones but my punching one is here if i come in here and search for my punching you can see i've got a punching one there so i'm gonna select that and i'm gonna compile and save and we're gonna go back to him so now the game started and he is definitely idling so good we've solved that that's a common issue and i'm gonna walk up and you'll say hi there i'm gary and nothing will happen okay so why is his animation not playing the first thing you have to know is unreal and narrative by extension won't just play standard animations so you can see in my breathing idle one here if I come and try and select that I won't be able to select it because this is looking for a animation montage they're slightly different to normal animations but they're super easy to create find your animation so in this case I will pick my breathing one right click create and just do create an in montage you can even do this in bulk so if I select my punching and my breathing right click create montage and it does that montages are different to animations because because you can do extra functions on them for example in here i could add a notify so when i punch at a certain distance it notifies the player that the characters extended their arm spawn a collider or something and there's loads of other bits you can do with them but now since i've created montages from them i will be able to come in and select my animation so the reason montages are important is montages allow you to do multiple different levels of animation but also they allow you to play them using animation blueprints now the key here is the animations that you apply directly to a mesh are standard animations as you can see the animation sequences however because narrative and a lot of other unreal things like you to have the montages we need to tell it to play the montage so how do we link it up and how do we allow montages to play because even if i was to come in here and do play montage directly on the mesh it won't work we can only play montages if our animation blueprint is set up to allow them and this is super easy to do so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come down into my blueprints folder just where i put gary's test stuff and i'm simply going to right click animation animation blueprint and i'm just just going to come and select my skeleton so in my case i'm using polygon elven so i'll just find the net skeleton for that i'll hit create i'll call it ab underscore gary because that's his you don't need one animation blueprint per character unless they've got vastly different animations you can just create one animation blueprint based on your base npc so for example in my npcs i have my als npc then all other npcs are child blueprints of that so let's open up gary's animation blueprint and you'll see in this output post here it wants us to stick an animation in now you could just come in drag the breathing idle in and connect it to it and compile and that would work but it's not going to play montages yet so we need to override it and say now you play montages so what we do for that is we can drag off of this little character here and all we have to do is type in default slot like so you can put this anywhere you want for it to play but, but it's typically advised that you put it as close to the output node as possible not distance wise but if you've got like five six seven other nodes then you want the default slot to allow montages to play one exception to this is for example if you're using ik rigs 
and stuff to hold weapons. You may very well want to play the montage before that and then make the IK rig still grab the gun. So if you're making them shout up kind of thing, like, you know, a Tuscan roar, then you don't want the default slot to remove the hands, so do your IK rig stuff after. But typically for me, I just put it as close to it and it's completely it's fine. Everything else will go after it. So you'll have your states in here, your blend trees, everything else. So just for my simple sake, that's all I've got. And you'll notice no, it, nothing changes. It looks fine. But this slot is one thing a lot of people commonly forget and it stops montages from playing. And if I come back to Gary, click on his skeletal mesh and assign the animation blueprint to it, that's the first problem a lot of people have. And now if we try it, if we run up to him, you can see he says, hi down Gary, but his animation still doesn't play. Why? So let's have a look. So the next step is a, a narrative feature, but it is an important one nevertheless. Narrative, when you're assigning animations to, to nodes, has two types of animation it can play. Body animation, which is your entire skeleton moving, and then facial animation, which you use for mocap suits and stuff like that. It will only play, if you hover over them, it tells you, if there's a tag of body on it. And then the facial one will only play if there's a tag of face. So this means when narrative has the speaker, just don't forget narrative doesn't know what your actor is at this point. It only knows it when you call begin dialogue and it finds this speaker ID in the world. So if we come over to Gary here, narrative will get this and it will search in here for one of these components to have the tag of body so it knows how to play the body animation. Well, currently I don't have this at all on here. So I'm going to come to my mesh here because this is where I want my body animation to play and I'll search for tag and just add a component tag of capital B body just like that and compile and save. So that's another one. If you're using meta humans or CC animator characters or anything like that, you very well may, may have a split mesh and a split face. Just go to your face or your head and apply the next tag of, in this case, face. But I don't have it, so I can just close that. So once you've done that, that should be another step to making it work. And now if we walk up to him, we've solved one more issue, but the animation still doesn't play. So that's completely fine. The next common mistake is incompatible animations. So as I've just previously alluded to, narrative doesn't know what your speaker is. It, it doesn't know if it's this type of blueprint of Gary. It doesn't know if it's this type of blueprint of NPC. if it's this destructible barrel here. It can literally be anything. It could change throughout the game. So you could have one type of NPC on this level at the pier, and then when you get to a higher level, you could have a completely different NPC with the exact same name. And that is okay, a bit weird, but it's okay. So narrative doesn't know how how to classify which animations to run. So it's animation incompatibility is the next one. This one here, punching, is the one we set up, is it not? So if I come down to my animations here that I created the montage of, you'll see I've created the montage of the Mixmo animations, okay? But the Mixmo animations won't work on this character. If we go back to our animation blueprint here and try to drag this Mixmo montage in for punching, the skeletons aren't compatible. And you'll also notice that in the dialogue, this one is semi-purple, whereas this one is bright blue. So I've already mixed up my animations as well. This one here that I've selected is actually the ALS punching one. So, and because narrative doesn't know what type of skeleton this speaker is going to be, it shows you every montage. So what you need to do is make sure that your montage is properly set up and you've selected the right one. So for example, if I come back to my polygon Elven and actually create the montage of the correct ones, like so, and then just drag this punching one in, this will give us a better chance of it working. So if I compile and save now and run the game again, so now if I try and run up to him, you'll see he'll say, Hi there, I'm Gary Dialogue, and he's still not playing the animation. Okay, so why is he not playing the animation now? We've sorted the animation blueprint, we've double checked that the montage is correct, and we've added the tag of body. So the next thing to try is add a camera. Just see if it actually looks at the NPC when he's talking. If I come in and I just set to medium full, just default and click compile. If I try it again now, this is the next common issue people have. And now if I run up to him, where's the camera? The camera's not working, but we've selected everything we need for the camera. So this is the fourth and final thing narrative will check for is it actually needs to be able to find the NPC in the world. So narrative here, you've never told narrative what NPC to link to. When I call begin dialogue on my character, I don't pass in the NPC at all. So how does it know who you're talking to? It could very well be you want to talk to this guy, but it actually shows a camera over here for some reason. I, I don't know why it would, you know, never know. So how do we tell narrative that this is the speaker you want to play with to show the camera and to play the animation? And that's where the tags come in again. In my dialogue class defaults, I have my speaker ID 
ID here. I don't want him called Gary Dialog. I'll just call him Gary. And I will fix up these references here. And now, if I come compile and save and go back to Gary and just click at the top level self, you can see in my tags here for the actor, I'm going to add Gary as an actor tag right there and combine and save. Doing this now tells narrative as soon as it loads, go and find references to all the speakers in the world. So it'll find everyone who's got Gary, everyone who's got player on it, or get and everyone who's the owner of the narrative so it can find the player and it will try to do it. If it can't find Gary, it will just do what it did before and not do anything with the animations or cameras because you very well might not want it to link up, which is fine. But if it finds multiple Garys, like if I do this, then it will try to find the closest one to the player. So in this case, it will be this one if I run up to it. So we, we know we can just get rid of that. It's good practice not to have the exact same named NPCs in the game, but sometimes it's what you want. And now if we run up to him now, we've covered the animation blueprint, we've covered the body and face tags, incompatible animation, and we've now selected the right speaker. So running up, his camera will work perfect, and he punches. There we go, ladies and gentlemen, that is it. I know it seems like a lot of steps, but it's really, really not, I promise. It's basic, unreal stuff that you will need later down the line. So the animation blueprint, you're not going to get very far in a game if you don't have an animation blueprint, because it controls everything and lets you handle so much. If you're blending in code animations, you're going to have a bad time. So animation blueprints, you don't need to learn them to an advanced level. I don't know them to an advanced level. I just know the very basics, such as here. And I typically copy from the Unreal one anyway. So the animation blueprints are an absolute must. The default slot, that's an Unreal thing, not a narrative thing. You will often play your own montages and you're going to want them to play. But if I open up my player here, when I call attack, I play a montage right here. This montage won't work without an animation blueprint and without the default slot. So that is a pure Unreal thing. Create it, get used to creating it. It makes your life so much easier. The other three aspects are a narrative thing, but to give you maximum customization and flexibility across all the different types of characters that you may use. So adding the body and the face tag, it is a little bit tedious, but you do it once, you never have to do it again because you should have a base NPC class anyway, and then you do it to that character, everyone else works. Animations not being compatible, that's just an unreal thing, really. You can call play montage and assign any montage here that you want. It doesn't matter which skeleton you link it to. So you just need to be careful with that one. It is a bit tough, but typically if you keep an eye on your animation, animations, maybe name them, or even just do what I did, where you click it, find the correct animation and drag it up. If you aren't sure if the animation is supported for your character, remove narrative from the equation, just come to your character, play montage, drag in the mesh, and play the montage on that character. So in this case, I will play the punching one, and just test it on an event begin play or something like that. If it works, then you know your animation blueprint's okay, and you know it's not your animation. If it doesn't work, chances are you need to look at your animation blueprint, or you've selected the wrong animation. Finally, the speaker ID, that's just a way for narrative to find this actor in the game because if you, because if narrative tries to find the actors in here, it's going to struggle if your actor is on level 2, a completely different level or something. That's why it runs at runtime rather than in the editor. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That is all the common issues you have with animations and how to fix them. One of the other bonus entries I will show is you will notice that my actor is facing forwards. Looks okay. But if I run up to him, you'll see the camera is facing the complete completely wrong way, it's pointing at his face. And then when he punches, he plays punching fine, but the camera's wrong. This is another common issue I see with blueprints, is when you first import your mesh to Unreal, for the life of me, I have no idea why, but it's not facing the right direction. It looks to be, but the blue arrow here is the forwards direction of the character. So if I were to come into my mesh and just remove my mesh, that blue arrow is the character's forwards around here. It's not here where the blueprint tree starts you off and the mesh is rotated, it's here. Now I don't know if Unreal just always imported animation models rotated 90 I, I don't know but the simple fix is to just come in and add minus 90 that's it click compile you will have every NPC just randomly rotated 90 degrees now to face the blue arrow but the red and blue arrow should be facing the same way and if I rotate him around narrative can successfully look forwards find the characters facing direction and sort the camera out and thus everything else there we go so the camera works and he punches correctly now you might be thinking how can anybody miss the blue arrow and that is 
is true. A lot of people don't actually necessarily miss the blue arrows because it is obvious. What a lot of people do miss is where, when they're using metahumans. For some reason, again, I don't know why. If anybody knows, let me know in the description. But metahumans aren't set up correctly either. So I've just switched quickly to a demo project here to show you what I mean. So I've downloaded a metahuman here called Amelia. Okay, so we'll drag her in. So if I drag her in now, you'll see she places down. She looks like she's facing forwards. All good, right? But if I come and open her up, you'll notice she doesn't have an arrow. So you don't know which direction is forwards. If you look at the top right up here, you will see it tells you what type of parent class it is of an actor. So this technically means because she's an actor, she's not going to walk around the level. She won't be spawned with AI and she doesn't have any collision or anything else like that. I don't know why MetaHumans gives you this blueprint because for games, it's not fantastic unless you're just doing cinematic games. You have to convert it over. So here, you don't really know which way is forwards. If you apply animation and everything to it, it will play, but the cameras will look differently as well and you'll have to set it all up. I know from experience that she needs to face the red arrow. So technically, I need to grab her and rotate her 90 degrees and now she's facing forwards, which in the game has faced her a different direction, but that is the correct way. Before when I said, P how do people miss the blue arrow? Because if they're using metahumans, it doesn't have a blue arrow. It's a common mistake. And what I always suggest for this is if you've got these NPCs walking around your map, convert them over. So go to class settings, parent class, and change it to a character. And that way they've got all the AI set up. They'll be able to walk around the level and they'll have the blue arrow to show you they're not in the right orientation. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That is all the different ways to set up your animations and to, to fix the camera for the animations and all the common mistakes that I see. It's super simple once you crack it down. It's simply five steps. Add an animation blueprint, add the body and face tags where appropriate, make sure the animation is compatible and make sure they've got a tag for the speaker ID. And then the fifth one for the camera is make sure they're facing the right direction. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that helps. Have you got any other tips? Let me know below. Any other tutorials you'd like to see? Also, let me know below. Thanks for watching. My name is Decryption and I will see you next time.